No, but you know how they always say there are days where you don't exactly like your partner. No, eh? I, every day I like. I cannot just... relate. Wait, what? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! What is going on, guys? Hi guys, welcome to another episode of The Hot Pot where we hop into different transitions in life. I'm Nick. I'm Joey. I'm Q. And today's episode is a little bit different. Mm. We're going to dive into tough relationship dilemmas. Hey, today's episode, very purple, huh? Uh, mine is a little guys, bit only... Sorry, sorry, I'm getting a call. Eh, eh. Eh? Hello? How can I do that? How Wait, can... I'm so sorry. Wait, wait, I need me look. How can Fleming halfway take I can't take hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, as in, have I told them that this episode is sponsored by Cadbury? Uh, oh. I, I'm telling them, actually, we're filming right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. <gasps> that was good, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> thinking them funny. <laughs> Guys, speaking of chocolates, what's your favourite flavour? I'm quite... Uh... I like nuts. Oh, are you nuts about nuts? Yeah, but I don't really like when there's like orange in my chocolate. Oh, yeah, oh. that's not a vibe. I don't like orange and liquor in my chocolate. Mm. Liquor. Liquor. <laughs> I generally just love milk chocolate. I I'm a very basic too. gal. Oh my god, nothing wrong with like being basic. The white colour, Anna. No, milk chocolate is this. This is milk chocolate. Okay, okay. Before we get too excited and carry away about chocolate, let's hop into today's topic. Okay, relationship dilemmas. I'm ready. Eh? I'm so ready. Okay, first dilemma. Help or decline. A friend asks to borrow money but says they can't disclose the reason why. Do you lend it to them, trusting their judgement, but risking potential awkwardness or non-repayment, or decline and possibly strain the friendship? How tight is the friend? And how and much how money? Much money? Uh, you yeah. want to borrow $100? Okay. Uh. 1000 Close friends? Yes. If it's a close friend, I trust their judgement. Okay, close friend, don't want to disclose 10 k uh, I think I can. Okay, top three close friends, yes. Mm. To me, I will lend within my means. Um, close friends or, or friend. Mm. But the non-repayment part, right? Everybody can non-repay me one time. You're willing to lose 10k. If I value you as like one of the three pe- closest people that like in my li- is in my life, mm. right? Then I lend you 10k and then you don't pay, right? Then that's it lah. Can't relate. <sighs> Can't relate. I think... Then you think of it as like you pay school fee to learn who are your real friends. <laughs> that's a very <laughs> expensive... Very expensive. It could have been a five hundred dollars skills future yeah. thing. Why must thank? <laughs> Why must thank? Oh my okay, god! Okay. But there's a saying that if you lend money to friends or family, you need to expect that it's not coming. Yeah. If you're not willing to part with that money, mm. then rethink it. Yeah. But I think TLDR right. The the judgment is really just closeness. Okay. Next dilemma. Rekindle or move on. After years of being together, you notice that your emotional connection with your partner has weakened and you no longer feel the same spark. Do you try to rekindle the relationship or accept that you've grown apart and move on? Wow, I think this is perfect for the both of you because I would not know how to answer this. You've both been in a long-term relationship. I'm sure Mm. that there are down times and phases where you don't exactly feel the same kind of love for your partner. Actually, no way. Yeah, I still feel (laughs) like, like... no, but you know how they always say there are days where you don't exactly like your partner. No, eh? I, every day I like. I cannot just... relate. Wait, what? <laughs> I no, so relate. I feel like the difference from like early days of dating, right, during your honeymoon phase, right, is like you will get like these huge spikes mm. of like positive emotion. Yeah. Whereas now it's like like a IV drip of positive emotion, where it's, it's just like Bali. constantly like you know like a a, a quiet buzz ah. of positivity. Oh. Wait. I don't like IV, but okay. Yeah. Wait, but why do I always see these things on the social media? <laughs> it's definitely glorified. I will say that I feel very lucky in that I still feel a spark, you know? But I mean, it's not like I wake up and I'm like, ah, where's Charlie? You know, I don't mm. feel like that. But there's this reassurance that in any moment, I have someone to turn to and I'm excited to turn to them. Like, when something happens, the first person I want to tell is... Charlie mm. or my best friend and if there come a time where okay maybe physically for example I think in marriages the one main thing is making time for intimate moments um, that is definitely a lot of work syncing your schedules syncing your your feelings also making sure you're in sync mm. that is something that a lot of people really like people don't really talk about it you need to put in the work mm. sometimes you need to pencil and like schedule it in because you guys are just busy 
And I think it boils down to effort. If none of y'all are willing to put in the effort, then it's probably a telltale sign that... Yeah, if you're yeah. not willing to put in effort, that means that you don't really like feel like much yeah. about the relationship. Okay, I understand where you're coming from, right? But imagine a couple that has been together for 10 years. Mm. Do you think that having a deadline might help the situation? Deadline of trying again. Well, I think very hard to say. Because mm. I think every relationship is different. Mm-hmm. And then like, I don't think we are the best people to give advice. Because so, you're like, them in love. La. No, because like these people are like 10 years, 20 years together. Next time you're 50 years old already, how? So it's a bit hard to say. Okay. But what I would say is don't go and have children to try and rekindle your spark. Yes. Oh my God. Don't, Seems quite common. Oh. Don't have kids or like get pets to spice things up. Yeah, because a lot of people like, they're like, yeah, not really feeling it. Like there's no, no purpose maybe, in their relationship. Yeah, maybe we should have a kid. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh my God. A lot of times there's no more spark. Mm. They are not like romantically in love with each other anymore. There's no more romance, but they still love and care for each other. And it almost becomes companionship. Like, like they, friends. Yeah, mm. but they are family members already. And I think it boils down to whether that is enough for you. Mm. So in this case, what will you choose? I will communicate that, hey, you know, I feel like recently we haven't been prioritizing us as a couple. Mm. Saying I love you and like kissing is so important. Holding hands, like the little like touches, it, it's subtle, but it makes a difference. And words of affirmation, just complimenting yeah. each other. Dates, even though they seem very mundane, like you have meals together, if you don't make it a date, you don't take the time to hold each other's hand or, mm. you know, like walk and talk, have dessert, like little mm. things like that actually help to build the relationship. Mm. And when you don't take time, yeah, it will really affect the, the relationship. So I would say let's, I'll acknowledge that there's been a lack. And if after trying, it still is not working right, or like I'm putting in effort, he's not, or he's putting in effort and I'm not, mm. then I'll call it quits. I agree. Um, maybe you can role play. Oh, I mean, that's interesting. That's very random, but okay. Yeah. No, but you know how like that kind of works for <laughs> yeah, some yeah, couples. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or you can use like chocolate. For you, I would. <laughs> role play. <laughs> I think... Try to rekindle for... For every year that y'all are together, right, you add like three months. You can't make a statistic. Okay, maybe personal goals for that you. That means la. if you are together for 10, 10 years, years 30 right, months. You, must, you must try and rekindle for 30 months. Okay, F- okay. that is okay. next answer and we'll take it. Okay, next dilemma. Parents' expectations or personal desires. Your Ooh. parents have expectations for you to follow a certain career path, but you have different personal desires. Do you conform to family expectations or pursue your own path and risk disappointing your parents? I think it really depends on how strict and rigid your parents are. Mm. My dad has expressed his fear or worries. Uh, same with my grandparents. You know, they, they were telling me like, oh, if you sing at bars, be careful. You know, there are a lot of dangerous men out there. Or are you sure this is paying you enough? Because... It truly is very sporadic and not consistent at all. Um, But the one thing that I really appreciate from my family members is they say what they're worried about, but they back off. Mm. Like they don't impose their beliefs on me, you know? Mm. My dad has always wanted me to get a degree, right? Mm. And that was something he insisted on. But knowing my dad, he also would respect my final choice. Mm. In this scenario... I will go with my personal desires. But I know of some people who cannot escape the control of their parents. Yeah, same. So I feel yeah. like the right middle ground is you just need to set your kid up to have realistic expectations of the world. Mm. So it's like, okay, if you choose to like be a professional juggler, <laughs> then, oh, they came out of nowhere. then this is what you can expect from life. Uh, right? Juggling. Yeah, so you might, you might love your juggling. <laughs> Every day. But then like, maybe some days got no work. No no party yeah. to, to be a juggler. Yeah. Juggle the bills. Yeah. You might struggle to find a partner because if your partner be like, I'm juggling. <laughs> Not so sure. So as long as like, as a parent, I bring you up with like a full, like you go into your juggling life <laughs> with your eyes wide open, right? Yeah. Then I think I have done okay. my, my part as a parent. Mm, okay. Yeah. Obviously, every family situation is different but I think you it would suck more if you betrayed yourself than your parents Mm. okay next dilemma parenthood or partner your partner reveals they cannot conceive 
or don't want to pursue other options like adoption? Do you stay in the relationship sacrificing your desire to have a family or do you leave to fulfill your dreams of parenthood? I feel like this is really a make or break thing. Like a lot of people, they are great together. They have great synergy. They've been together like maybe six, seven years. And then they realise one of them is not budging on wanting or not wanting kids. But I feel like this kind of thing you must establish at the start. You do... Third date. Talk about it. Third date. Uh. <laughs> actually, I will ask first date. Do you want kids? If a guy asks you on the first date, like, you want kids? Uh? No, actually, I'm down. Yeah. As in, I'm down. Down, down right kids, now. Uh. Let's go. <laughs> okay. I'm pregnant. Straight away. No, as in, I'm down to talk about it. But I, I would assume that a lot of people are not open enough mm. for the first date conversation. So I personally would wait for the third, fifth date. Then maybe ask but kind of people questions. But maybe it organically comes up. Yeah, like, then, like, you're yeah. talking. Then, but like, if it's scripted, then I think third to fifth date. Uh, mm. True. <laughs> scripted. If a toddler walks by, you're like, oh my god, so cute. Like, like, how do you like? Do you like kids? Yeah. Like simple, not like oh the 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 steak is quite nice. So do you want children? <laughs> like a bit <laughs> difficult, right? <laughs> I've had this conversation with Charlie. Um, we both really want kids, mm. and we've always wanted to be parents. But we are both also very aware that we are not ready for children at the moment. Mm. And unfortunately, I have a biological clock. Mm. Like as a as a woman, I can only be fertile for so long, right? So I think we've both had the conversation where if by the time I'm ready, we cannot have kids. Then so? Then fine. Oh, mm. really? Uh? Yeah. I mean, I really want to be a mom, but I also know that it's not responsible just to have a cute baby and, you know, like take photos, go on outings, cute things. There's so much that goes into bringing a child up. I think it really depends on whether you think having a partner is enough for you mm. in your life. So for me, I feel like if I have a partner who, who is ready to be my right and die, and my partner in crime, right? That's all I need. Yeah. I don't think I need kids to feel fulfilled. Same. So if that's the case, then stay in a relationship. But if your answer is no, I think you might then need to take the other option. Question part! Okay, wait, 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 guys, guys, guys. Hear this, hear this, hear this. Oi. Oi. <laughs> Crunchy. Ah, <laughs> uh, ASMR. <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> anyway. Do you prefer ice cream in a cup or cone? Three, two, one. Cone. Cup. I chose cup because, right, every time I eat with a cone, Sticky. it will just drip, drip, drip. You're messy. Ah. I'm very clean when I eat. What's the strategy? Oh, <laughs> please never do that again in public. Yeah. You oh, must 360 the cone. Oh, one time, one time. You cannot just lick one side. Cause last time when I was young, I made the mistake. I still remember, you know. Lick one side. I lick one side, then, then the, the thing dropped. <laughs> Okay, your turn. Go. Would you rather always have durian sand stained on your fingers or seaweed stuck in your teeth? Fingers, fingers. Durian sand on yeah, your fingers. Yeah, it's still nice to like, like that. But then maybe... <laughs> no? You know after you eat curry and prata, you, you don't like that, man? No, it's because the seaweed will always be seen. But then maybe you can tell people the seaweed is your tooth gems. <laughs> No, 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 no. Show, it's not a show, show. show the camera. I don't want. Show your CV. It's not CV. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're done. If you could be a fly on the wall for any historical event, which would it be? Oh my God. I want to be in the planning room when Taylor Swift decided when to release Reputation, Taylor's version. Okay. I want to hear all the Easter egg planning. It will be a historical event, mark my words. Nick looks a little bit disappointed, but you know it, what? It wasn't your question. I want mind. to be fly on the wall, right? For like the whole Justin Bieber, Selena Gomez, like Hailey Bieber thing. You are right. Right, 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 right. right. Okay, that one right. quite juicy. That one juicy, yeah. that one juicy. Also, well, actually, like these kind of relationship dilemmas quite tough. Mm. But it's clear that like, you know, with all these different dilemmas, there's typically an element of sacrifice to it. Yeah. Right. Mm. Has anyone ever sacrificed for your... My mother. Oh. No? My mother was a... <laughs> father. Your mother was no, a father. My niang. Your, niang? Your my niang, niang was a deer. My niang was a deer. Oh. <laughs> oh, she was such a deer. Um, I think my mom sacrificed her career and the freedom to travel because she's kind of like us. She likes mm. traveling. Uh, she would hike mountains and mm. you know kill chickens on the mountains. <gasps> she's an wow. adventurous gal. Okay. Dang. Uh, jump off waterfalls. You what know? is you? Eh? Oh, I don't dare jump no, off I waterfall. Eh? Yeah. I bungee jump how many times already? You <laughs> Anyway, I've <laughs> so I think for the family and having kids, right, she had to let go of all of these aspects mm. of her life that made her feel like an individual. And eventually she became a housewife. So even when we were struggling with our, our schoolwork, she would be the tutor. Mm. She really carried. 
hard carry this yeah. family. And I think, I mean, I've asked her before, like, were there any other regrets in your life? And mm. she always said, um, she don't regret having us, but she wish she had kids a bit later. Because mm. I think she never got to really live her best life. Mm. Yeah. So that was, I think, her biggest sacrifice for us. Mm. Mm. But I think you've been, like, you travel with her. You plan a trip with her, right? I'm planning for yeah. a trip. Yeah. I think that's really nice. Mm. But I think sometimes I don't know how to give back. Because yeah. the things that she gave is so huge mm. that I think in this lifetime, I cannot pay back. Mine not so deep, <laughs> but like sorry, I feel like sorry. in in recent times something that stood out for me was like so when we had our wedding right quite recently we did like a smaller destination wedding, mm. and then at that point of time I think when we were organizing we were quite hesitant about doing a destination wedding because yeah. like people would have to fly in they would have to take leave from work spend money and things like that right to attend, so we were like uncertain also whether like people want to do that and if it's yeah. asking too much. So to have like, have had friends and family be like so on for like, okay, yeah, we're going to be there. You know, we'll set aside time and things like that. Then you see everybody is just there for you, right? Oh. Wow, it was really quite like, everybody really like touched sacrificed. Yeah, yeah, quite touched there. Here almost. Yeah, like, I feel like. Rolled down your face. I, I matter in this world. I think they fly there because they want to see you cry. Yeah. Yeah. Got, and you did. Got ROI. And yeah. also the wedding destination quite. Sure. Like, like can holiday a bit yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like. No, you like buy one, get one free. It's like, oh, the itinerary now got like interesting thing. <laughs> yeah. <Got> one wedding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> True. But this was more of like a e- event or incident based mm. sacrifice. Like, not like yours, like a lifetime. Yeah. Incident based. Mother. My mother. Sounds very like insurance policy. Her, his is 1A. Mine yeah. is the whole document. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Um, for me, I think it's my dad. My dad really stands out to me in that he really gave up a lot of his hobbies, his passions, his beliefs, just to hold the family together. Mm. I think it's a really noble sacrifice and I'm glad that he's finally able to live his best life now. Mm. Yeah. Is he really living his best life now? I really think he is. He's travelling, he's doing his feng shui ah, like so everywhere. Yeah, Sam. Sam is living it up. Sam, would love to meet you one day. Yeah, man. I can imagine us hanging out with Sam. Eh. Is it? I want to see Sam and Nick hang out. Okay, so with that said, what does sacrifice mean to you? It means like you give up something that you really don't want to give up. Really? really want to give up. I think it's a bit of unconditional love. You don't think about what you will get back in return. To me, sacrifice comes where you lose something within yourself. So like, I will have less of this curry and I'll let you have the rest because I know you like it. <laughs> or like, I know you like the, the white part of the bread so I eat the outside, oh. the brown part. Oh my god, that's my mother. Yeah. Can I just say my mom, right? She will always, okay, both my mom and my dad, right? Yeah. They will always wait for us to finish eating. Then she, they'll eat the leftover. <gasps> so, you know when you order chicken rice, right? Like a whole chicken, we'll eat the drumstick, the wing and yeah, everything. Yeah. Then my, my parents will end up eating the breast. Then sometimes if there's only lunch for, like they tap out lunch for themselves, right? But we are hungry. They'll say, you eat, you eat my lunch. I'll buy later again. <gasps> Can you still be happy while sacrificing for someone else? Like in the case of your mom. Like if you put yourself in her shoes, right? Do you think that like you can be truly happy? I think for me, maybe not because I don't think the you one want, yeah. of having kids is like her, mm. Mm. right? But she will always say things like, yeah, I'm happy. Even if I leave th- this earth right now, I'm happy that the family is um, is relatively healthy. Mm. Like we, we, are ha- we had our happy times. Um, she don't think that her sacrifices are moments of sadness. Mm. I will say that in our culture also, self-sacrificial actions are glorified. Like they are celebrated. Like if you say like, oh, you know, because of like this person, I didn't do this, I didn't get to, they're like, oh, you're so nice, you're so kind. Like it's, it's almost encouraged. I mean, I think it depends also because like, because it's so glorified sometimes, right? Then what happens is that there are a lot of people that, that take the sacrifice hostage. Oh, like, you yes. know, last time I give up my whatever, whatever. Oh. oh, then that is not. Yeah. That is not. I, I don't That's think. That's conditional love. Yes. Yeah. My mother. Oh, sorry. I, wow. Today's main character is my mother. mother. <laughs> my mother would never say that. Mm. She would never say that. So that's why I, I, I mentioned just now that to me, sacrifice is unconditional love because my mom showed unconditional love. Yeah. But I've heard of stories, toxic families where the parents would always use it as a weapon. Mm. Like, I did this for you, pay me back. 
weaponized sacrifice. Mm. So on that note, right, why do you all think that people are willing to sacrifice for the people that they love? It's an act of love. Like, hey, you know, I really want this too and you know I do too, but... Mm. Because I love you, I'm doing this for you. You know how we our five love languages, right? Mm. There's acts of service, words of affirmation, gifts, right? You don't think about these things. You just want to make that person happy. Mm. Mm. And you're just like, oh, buy kopi, buy teh for your for mm. your loved ones, right? I think it's just a, a expansion of that. Yeah. You don't really think about having a huge impact. Yeah. You just want to make them happy and yeah. make them a better person. Mm. So if that's the case, right? Then it, can it be said that sometimes sacrifice, right? It's a self-serving action. I was going to oh. say that. Because if you got to so. be your savior, if you got to be your savior complex, uh, then I like, wow. I'm a great person. I'm so good. <laughs> like, I'm such mm. a great husband or wife or or son or parent. Maybe not so malicious. Like, like yeah, I'm doing this to feel great. But I think we cannot, la. we cannot deny that it will make that person feel great. Good. But then it betters the relationship as a whole. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because now I feel like you have benefited from that and so have I in that I feel like I fulfilled my duty as a parent. Activity time! Okay, guys. So we've come to a special segment. As you can see, we have Cadbury's new packaging. Oh my god. Beautiful, beautiful. Hmm. It says, for you, I would and then blank. So the activity here is that we need to fill in the blanks for what we are willing to do for our loved ones. Oh my god. Okay, so we have three flavours. I'm holding the fruit and nut. I'm holding milk chocolate. And then I got roast almond. Of course you got that one. Delicious. My favourite. Okay, let's write down. So yours is you're writing for your Mm mum. And you're writing for your friends. Yeah. I'll write for my dad. Okay. Well, how to write this? Wait, let me go and check. Okay, so for me, right, this is for my friends who made a huge sacrifice of coming to my destination wedding. For y'all, I would plan a group holiday. <gasps> then you pay every day? Oh, uh, no. That... So you make them pay again? No, he, yeah. just plan. he just I plan. just plan. It's not easy. Eh? I have been doing that. <sighs> okay, mm. okay la. give it to him, give it to him. Good job, good job. Mm. So much sacrifice. I wrote on mine, it's very simple. Please don't laugh. I won't. For you, I would be a kind person, like how you taught me to. Aww. I think my mom has always been someone that embodies kindness and she's very nice to strangers. And I think um, if, if I have any good traits as a human being, it's all because of her. Okay, mine. This is for my dad, okay? For you, I would mala xiao la. Oh, that's so cute though. Xiao la is really torture for me, guys. Xiao la is like yong tau fu. As in, because my dad loves spicy food also. <sighs> Actually, mm. I love spice because of my dad. Mm. But as we get older, myself included, but we are in denial about that still. Stomach cannot. Uh. Stomach cannot. Uh. Mm. So, maybe zong la. But zong la, medium spicy is still a bit spicy. So, I'll go small. Xiao la. Like deep down, you actually want to say xian. I really, my mouth is like not heavy. <laughs> no, I just eat chili pali on the side. It's okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was a very big sacrifice. Actually, mine like not bad. <laughs> Coco <laughs> balance lah. Yours, huh? you benefit. I don't benefit from it. Eh. Hello, oh my god. Everybody. Oh my god. Oh, what was it? Uncle Sam. <laughs> Uncle Sam. <laughs> what is going on? Oh my god. Hi, Uncle. Wait, come sit down. Wait, what's going what? on? What's what is happening? Wait, why is your dad here? Do you know about this? What is going on, guys? Oh my god. Uh, no, she's cover, your, cover your ears. Cover your ears. Cover your ears. What the f- Okay, the what? mic has been placed for Uncle Sam. Yeah. Guys, we are still in shock. Guys, this is an outer body experience. Oh. Outer, out of. This is an out of body experience for me, okay? My my father is here. Oh my god. <laughs> Welcome! Yay. Yay. Out of body experience. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, Uncle Sam, can you introduce yourself? Alright, I just left the corporate world. So you can say that I'm in my semi-retirement. So. semi retirement. Oh, semi! This is. Semi-retirement. Semi. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, pursuing my passion, holistic healing, oh. metaphysics. Oh, I love that. that. Kind of I love thing. that. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, Joey has always described you as a very fun and loving dad. We've heard her side of her, the stories, right? But how is your relationship with Joey? Okay, if I may just use one word to describe the relationship. She's going to cry at you. Use the word cherished. We've passed the past and cherished. Oh, it means don't cherish me anymore. (laughs) No, it's it's past participle, being cherished. So it's not a doing word. 
Oh. Yeah. Pas participle. Yeah. You, you must know the difference between human being and human doing. Mm. So being cherished. Take notes, take being notes. cherished. Wow. Okay. The yimster so, has been out yimsed. It is what is it? Uh? <laughs> yeah. Actually, it rings a bell uh, when you ask this question. Mm. Uh, because remember, Joey, you sang the song What a Wonderful World. Oh. Which year was that? NDP. 2016. Yes, 2016. So basically, if you refer to the lyrics of this song, mm. the relationship is almost oh. uh, captured in, in the lyrics. Oh no, she's going to cry. So, so you mentioned about trees are green, roses are red, mm. clouds white, <laughs> skies blue. So it's just simply adoring, appreciating simple things. So mm. it's just deep appreciation, mm. deep admiration, deep wow. I mean, valuing each eh. other. My yeah. eyes are a bit teary also. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so because today we talked a lot about sacrifices right and she also mentioned about how you sacrifice for her has joey sacrificed anything for you any stories oh uh, i guess joey knows that i'm one who likes to have the neat and tidy <laughs> <laughs> no no what i sacrifice for you yeah, not yeah. what you sacrifice for <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so basically my expectation could be on the higher side in terms of being neat and tidy she's mm. busy schedules are tight yeah so she tried her best I think she was tired sometime and then she tried her best to clear up j just to make sure things mm. are neat and tidy. So so I see that as sacrifice. Oh. Okay. Ah. Oh, oh, oh. Joy, this is for you. So good. Hey, read, 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 Joy, read. I cannot right. talk now. Yeah, you say please, I cannot talk. So for you, I would cherish you forever. Oh. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Purposely, you know, I will cry. <laughs> nah, for you, I'm mala xiao la. Oh, mala. Oh, gosh. She says she's willing to eat xiao la for you. Eh. Nah, oh, that's a sacrifice. Yeah, I used to love da la. Yeah, but I'm trying to take care of my digestive yeah, system. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's risky. <laughs> Don't la. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of The Hot Pot. You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Me Listen. And subscribe to us if you haven't already. And a big thank you as well to Joey's dad, Uncle Sam, for joining us today. Thanks thank you for having me. So with that, just want to take a moment to also remind everyone to go and uh, show your loved ones appreciation, especially those who have uh, given up a lot for you. Yes. What would you do for the ones you love? Say it with the Cadbury bar today. And we will see you on the next episode. Bye. 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 I think if you're close, if you don't want to, to disclose, okay. Then you wrap up what? Hey, close, you don't want to disclose. Close and you don't want to disclose, I will take off my clothes. Hey. Oh. oh, oh, this is a wrong show. Oh. <laughs> you have re- uh, Sorry. Hey, <laughs> two of you are. You have- Disclose, the clothes, the clothes.